Hey guys, ViscosCom24 here, bringing you a real quick redstone video. Today I'm going to be showing you all this. It is my new and compacted 9x9 double cave door. So as you can see, it all closes. When I go on over to the back side, you can see it looks the exact same as the front. It is a double cave door after all. And when I go back on over to the front side and flick the lever again, you can see it will also all open. This thing is, I think, decent in terms of its speed but it's pretty much the exact same speed as the previous design because I essentially just copied the bottom wiring from the previous design. I had to change a few things to get in these sides, but overall it's pretty much the same speed. However, it is a bit smaller. I shaved the block off the top. This thing is 22 blocks tall, 15 blocks wide, and 15 blocks deep, giving it a volume of 4,950 blocks, and also making it my first ever 9x9 double cave door to be able to breach the 5,000 block uh, barrier. For a while, I had been trying to make a 9x9 double cave door that was smaller than 5,000 blocks in volume, and this is it, right here. I've honestly had a lot of innovation happen with just the 9x9 cave door as I've gone along, with coming up with the layouts for the sides that then went on to inspire the like compacted 11x11 11 and 12x12 12 12 cave doors, as well as a 10x10 10 10 that I haven't released just yet. And also, this top wiring here gave me a new technique for sh shortening the quadruples. For a little while, I thought that I had hit a immovable barrier with the previous design because of the top wiring and the bottom, but that's for slightly different reasons. You can see here that the top wiring has only one piece of slime this time, whereas in the previous designs, it had had two up top here. And the reason for that was I had been essentially just powering the middle extenders, those middle quadruples, through the ceiling. And this time, I got the final extension in using a redstone block. So I'm going to really quickly go over here and just set up a little bit of a demo. Oh yeah, and by the way, for those of you wondering, the reason that there's like this random spot of void here is because I actually made a YouTube short and TikTok out of this door before posting this video. I might actually schedule them all to release at the same time. Still undecided on that. All right, here we go. So here's a little demo of what I had used in previous designs. So you can see here, obviously, these are just some standard four piston extenders, but we've also got only two slime here. The reason I pointed that out is because of how you need to power it. So you can see here that powering works all fine until you get to this point. And at this point, you can see that the quadruples are right up the, the final pistons are right up against the floor. So in previous designs, I would just put a piece of dust there to power it, like so. And I'd usually accomplish this by having something that looks a little bit like this. So I'd power those pistons using dust right there, so that then I could power that afterwards, force reliability. And then obviously I'd get in a retraction of sorts, and uh, it'd be all fine and dandy. However, that obviously limits the size of the top to being six tall wiring. So you're one, two, three, four, five, six blocks above the ceiling. So in order to lower it, I would either need to fold the quadruples, which would have been a really bad idea because there's a grand total of six of them up here, or remove a piece of slime. And so obviously I went for removing a piece of slime, which then made things a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna set up the demo again. So here it is with a piece of slime removed. You can see now we're down to five blocks above, but if I go in for the extension, you can see here that our final pistons are actually one block below the floor, meaning that in order to power them, I now need to somehow get something here to extend them, obviously. And the way that I opted for going about that was just some redstone block storage. And you definitely would recognize this. It's all over the place in my builds. Yeah, there we go. And you can see that over here in the layout. It did make things a little bit more challenging, especially because now the retraction also requires that you be able to power this block. So it creates some issues. I, I opted for powering that block and then that block separately. And after that, the retraction is pretty standard. But that, that's what enabled me to shave off the top. However, I also decided, just because I was a little bit tired of the gross old design, to redo the sides. In my previous design, I had had a regular slider right here to get the power up to the top. And for those of you who don't know, 
Sliders in Bedrock Edition, they can, unlike Java Edition, automatically push back if you just hard power the piston. However, they cannot do so reliably. And I'm going to set up a real quick demo over here. You might recognize this little demo from some of my other videos because I like to use it uh, for a, a lot of different showcases. You can see down here I've got a normal piston and a normal piston, meaning that these things will push the redstone blocks up, and the only way that they'll get back down is if these push them down. And uh, just to make powering a little bit easy, I've used soft inversion here to make it so that they power once the redstone block's gone. Anyways, you can see here, if I start pushing them, you can see immediate, <laughs> that was way quicker than other videos, they don't consistently push these things back down at the same time. And that's just an inherent issue with sliders, no matter the length. The only way to force it is to power the other piston at the other end of the slider manually using something that isn't unreliable, like say maybe an observer chain or some repeaters or what have you. And the previous design only had the slider, so it had the re unreliability issues. It didn't have any way to force it to be reliable. So in to fix that, I just decided to redesign the entirety of the sides here. And I think it's actually been for the better. It's sped up the door's top wiring a fair bit from the previous ones, at least in terms of its input, because now the input is coming from right here, and it is being snuck up and around through this little torch tower and then sent through to the doubles and triples and what have you. That means that I also had a bit more room here to stuff in things like better triple wiring, because the wiring for the previous triple was a little bit wonky, if you will, and also kind of bad in my opinion, so I went through and fixed that as well. But uh, yeah, I think that's just about all I have to say about this door. I hope you all enjoyed this quick video, and um, I'm just using, using this as a way to test and see how things go with like shorts and, and TikToks and such, because I do want to actually try and get back into it and uh, see if I can, you know, maybe maybe get monetized. That'd be kind of cool. So uh, yeah, that's just about it for this video. I'm Viscoach Column 24, and I'll see you next time.